Oh man, when is this movie going to be over? What's going on guys, Ryan O'Toole back here again, giving you guys another review. Today I'm going to be reviewing The Girl in the Spider's Web, directed by Fetty Alvarez. Fetty Alvarez directed films like The Evil Dead remake, which a lot of people love, as well as Don't Breathe, one of my favorite home invasion films. In this movie stars Claire Foy as the new Elizabeth Salander, and Sylvia Hoax and Lakeith Stanfield. This film is essentially the sequel to David Fincher's Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, a soft little reboot. In this film, Lisbeth Salander, she's a computer hacker as well as a complete badass. She has to try to solve this mystery involving her sister, played by Sylvia Hoax, who have had a serious fallout in the past involving their father. And now she has to find her and she runs this criminal organization who's after her and she hacks computers. I went into this film, haven't seen the other Girl with the Dragon Tattoo iterations. I haven't seen the originals. I haven't seen the David Fincher film. But going into this film, I was expecting it to be kind of a cool neo-noir crime film. And Fetty Alvarez is a director. He's a really good director. I love Don't Breathe. That's one of the best home invasion films. And Stephen Lang as a blind old veteran, uh, yeah, that's pretty awesome. This film was so boring. It's a pretty bland, generic, James Bond ripoff action film. And that's what this movie completely was. I expected nothing but a boring film, and that's what I got. This isn't the worst film I've seen this year. It's not awful, but... I was expecting it to be a little better than what it was, but it went in a pretty predictable route. Thought the performances were fine. Claire Foy, she's fine as Elizabeth Salander. She kicks ass when she needs to. And it's pretty cool how her character hacks into different things like computers, cars, and electronic devices. It's pretty cool. Her accent could have been a little better, but it's not terrible. But Claire Foy, she's a really good actress, and many of the films I've seen her in recently, like First Man, Claire Foy, she's becoming to be a great actress, and I thought she was great here. And Sylvia Hoax is also in the film, if you don't know who she is. She played the sexy love replicant in Blade Runner 2049, and here she is pretty great as well, and she has a lot of great scenes in here too. Also, Lakeith Stanfield's in the film. He was in Get Out and Sorry to Bother You this year, and he was okay. I also thought the film had great cinematography, this great snowy setting. It made me feel like I was shivering, like I was in the wintertime. And many of the action sequences have taken place in snowy atmospheres. It's pretty cool. A lot of car chases, and I just thought the cinematography and the overall atmosphere and the land setting for the film was pretty great. The story to the film is the biggest negative I have with the film. It's very convoluted, it doesn't make sense, it's pretty cliche, and it just feels like something that's been done a million times before. I felt like the script felt like it wasn't completely finished, like the screenwriters didn't know where they wanted to take the story, it just felt like okay, let's make another one of these films and just make it a pretty generic action film. And it's only an hour and 57 minutes. Uh, apparently the first runtime was like two and a half hours. Thank goodness it wasn't that long, but it felt like a two and a half hour long film because the pacing is so freaking slow. It focused on too many action subplots. It didn't focus mainly on the things I wanted more of the relationship with Sylvia Hoax and Claire Foy. We don't even see Sylvia Hoax until nearly an hour and in something into the film, and that's the biggest negative I have. Also, I was really disappointed with the action sequences in this film. They're really shaky cam. Up close, whenever characters are punching each other in the face, it, it just closes in on them. You don't know what's going on, what the hand movements are, because it's shaky cam. Up close, pretty generic, bland action filmmaking that Fetty Alvarez could have done a better job on in the cinematographer. It just did not look that good. The opening credits to the film is ripping off James Bond and Daredevil over on Netflix. It just feels like 
something you've seen before and just comes off as bland. That's how I felt about The Girl on the Spider's Web. It's a very bland, generic, predictable film. If you go into this film, if you've seen the other movies, you pretty much know what you're going to get out of it. Just a generic action film that adds nothing new to the series, so overall, this film really let me down. On my rating scale, I'm going to give The Girl on the Spider's Web a 1.5 out of 5 stars. Alright guys, that was my review for The Girl and the Spider's Web. Have you guys seen it yet? What were your thoughts on it? Did you love it? Think it was okay? Or did you absolutely hate it? Let me know down below in the comments. Thank you guys as always for watching this review. And if you guys liked it, give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe today for more content. All my social media links are in the description down below. Click that notification bell on your way out. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!